and the circular functions and how they're intertwined. Let's make a few more comments while we're at it. You know, we mentioned that the hyperbolic functions were really combinations of exponential functions. Remember, cosh x was e to the x plus e to the minus x over 2, etc. So somehow or other, if the hyperbolic functions can be expressed in terms of exponentials, it would seem that the inverse hyperbolic functions should be expressible in terms of the inverse of exponentials, namely in terms of logarithms. And so I thought that I would try to go through some of these final points with you and, for example, ask the following question. Given that y equals inverse sinh x, is there a way of writing this in terms of something that uses our natural logarithms. See, uh, another reason being what? That if we've already learned natural logs and exponentials, it would seem that whenever we can reduce unfamiliar names to more familiar ones, psychologically, we feel much more at home in dealing with the concepts. In other words, one might feel strange working with inverse hyperbolic sign, because he hasn't seen that very much. But if he's used to seeing logarithms, that wouldn't seem quite as strange. At any rate, let's see how one could proceed here. In other words, starting out with y equals inverse sinh x, notice that by the property, the basic definition of inverse functions, I can now write that x equals sinh y. Now, for obvious reasons, since I want to get the inverse of exponentials in here, it would seem to me that I should express sinh y in terms of exponentials. And going again, back to basic definitions, sinh y is e to the y minus e to the minus y over 2. In other words, in terms of exponentials, x is equal to e to the y minus e to the minus y over 2. If I now cross multiply, I get that 2x is equal to e to the y minus, now notice that e to the minus y is just 1 over e to the y, so I wind up now with this particular equation. And multiplying through by e to the y to clear fractions in my denominator, uh, to clear my denominators, I wind up with what? e to the 2y minus 2x e to the y minus 1 equals 0. And if I now recall that e to the 2y is the square of e to the y, observe that what I now have is a quadratic equation in e to the y. I have a quadratic equation in e to the y. Now, since I have a quadratic equation in e to the y, I can use the quadratic formula to solve for e to the y. If I do this, I get what? Remember how this thing works. I take the coefficient of this term minus that, that's 2x, plus or minus the square root of this squared minus 4 times this times the coefficient of e to the y squared. In other words, leaving the details uh, as being fairly obvious, e to the y is 2x plus or minus the square root of 4x squared plus 4, all over 2. And noticing now that the 4 can be factored out here as a 2, and that I can cancel a 2 then from both the numerator and the denominator, I wind up with e to the y is x plus or minus the square root of x squared plus 1. The point to keep in mind now is remember that in terms of exponentials, e to the y can never be negative. Observe that the square root of x squared plus 1 is bigger than x in magnitude. You see? See, x would be just the positive square root of x squared. So the positive square root of x squared plus 1 is bigger than x in magnitude. Consequently, if I use the minus sign here, I'd be taking away more than what I had that would make my answer negative, which would be a contradiction since e to the y can't be negative. In other words, again, for, in terms of this particular problem, the minus root, the minus sign here, is extraneous. And we therefore wind up with what? e to the y is x plus the square root of x squared plus 1. Therefore, y itself is the log of x plus the square root of x squared plus 1 to the base e, which we've already seen is called the natural log. In other words, uh, going back now, say, from the first step to the last, I guess we can now fill in what's really happened here. In other words, a synonym for inverse sinh x is the natural log of x plus the square root 
of x squared plus 1. So notice that we can